Welcome to the Super Profit Friends. 15 minutes long because you're an entrepreneur and you've got a business to run. I wish you were an electrician instead of a plumber because Actually, I would have yeah. used you hard. Probably could have, honestly, we I have a ton of great it. electricians. It's plumbers that are hard to find. Yeah, well, yeah. two of your electricians ended up screwing me, so. Maybe it's cool. a tough client to work yeah. with. Yeah. <laughs> dumb client to work with? <laughs> User error. Oh, hey, welcome. We didn't see you there. Uh, all right, welcome back to episode five of SPF 15, Super Profit Friends. And it's the moment you guys have all been waiting for. Finally, you will find out <laughs> what Kaylin Pacheco does. Um, but the topic that we're uh, talking about today is starting your business. Uh, so, Kaylin, why don't you tell us what your business is? And then we can talk about starting your business. Let's make it super dramatic. Boom. Can we, like, drop Don't. a... You know what? The more we rise this, <laughs> the harder it is for her to do it. Wait, wait, wait. Wait, wait. On the thing, make it... Make she was the wrong person to save for last. Right <laughs> Very slowly. Yeah. And slowly then, during this whole conversation. <laughs> I am a portrait photographer. Oh! Yeah. oh. All right. So she also does celebrity shots. So she has some photos pictures of me. Of me. <laughs> Relax. That's that, all your jokes. Son. That looked epic. And um, thanks. Thanks to you, I'm now a celebrity yes. in the local community, so I Not appreciate sure. it. Actually, uh, Mayfire uh, is one of the, we can like literally like track like after the event that you took pictures at, we can mm -hmm. track like how drastically our viewership went up. So, oh, real. that's yeah. nice to know. It's awesome. awesome. Thank you. Mm. So, Mayfire Photography is. <laughs> yes, my uh, business name is Mayfire Photography because I <laughs> yes. haven't officially said that. So, um, <laughs> that said though, photographers are an absolute key to any business. Um, yeah. Like Zach just said, like viewership went up dramatically after uh, Mayfire Photography did work for uh, one of the Blessing LARPs. Um, we'll probably talk about this later, but if in social media, if you don't have good pictures, forget it. You ever, you ever just look mm -hmm. something up on Yelp and you're like, well, let's see what they look like, and you click on their Instagram, and it's like, blurry pictures of who knows what and you're like mm, all right yeah. well like those oh girls with like they're taking the selfie and like they got the bathroom in the background it's like Dude, i don't want to buy that today I'm like no that's not the one move swipe left i don't know what <laughs> that was all Walter about doesn't understand. <laughs> Walter doesn't understand. Swipe left. Internet. yeah apparently you're buying bathrooms <laughs> that's so the problem no, what are you on, selling yourself for the bathroom but on that point like places like restaurants where uh some restaurants are like you know i'm just going to use my phone take a picture or like take a snapshot with a Kodak camera and you put that up on Yelp or or on your website for like your menu things like that you're gonna like yeah people are not gonna be appetized I'll by be that like, food. when I started my business and we were pushing marketing on branding we were, it was all selfies right it was all using the phone using the iPhone and like that's everything that we did was with the phone my business didn't really take off until we started using external photographers to come in and do our videos for us, right? Mm -hmm. Once we start having other people do our videos. Now, the selfies are huge and they're great. You have to get those done in marketing, but the high quality shots and having somebody do it for you, just it just makes you look that much more professional. Right. Mm -hmm. And it really has, you know, you've, you've seen the difference in your business as well. Mm -hmm. It just dramatically improves uh, the quality of your business and the, the amount of leads that come through, yeah. especially when you're agents taking pictures of houses. You know, you do it with your phone, absolutely it works, but if you don't have the lighting on point, your phone can't really fix those things. Mm -hmm. it works perfect on a sunny day, but if you have the photographer, they can come in, they can fix it with Photoshop. Like, there's just so many different reasons why you need a professional photographer. Yeah, in general, uh, as a business owner, reach out to a photographer, find one that's good, yeah. especially for your website. Uh, definitely 100% make your website look as professional as possible. Yeah, Do not understand. use cheesy right. cell phone photos. These it's, are all, it's not going to be good bits of information for the topic at hand. <laughs> yeah, I was Me. about to go <laughs> back. Uh, so that said, uh, today's topic is starting your business. So let's uh, let's talk to Kaylin. What, what is the hardest part 
for you about starting your business? What was the hardest part about starting your business? Um, are we gonna? Yeah, answer is it. This? Answer okay. it honestly. Yeah. Well, <laughs> uh, there wasn't a. I wasn't like, okay, I am gonna start this business now. I'm gonna start taking photos. I took photos for a very, very long time. I'm 28 now. I started when I was maybe in middle school, but let's say high school. I, I, my memory's a little bit fuzzy. I don't really remember. Um, and I've always done it. But the problem with the, the reason I started it so late in life, even though I've always known that photography was my go-to creative outlet, um, was that I had what was called the imposter syndrome. Oh, that's a good one to bring up. All right. Imposter syndrome. Imposter Anybody syndrome. suffer from that before? Yeah, this guy. Cool. Daily? Yeah. Um, every day. Right. So, especially um, with the internet, I mean, you see just uh, the internet's full of photos and you mm -hmm. see work that other people have done um, and you're like, oh, I'm not there yet. I can't. I can't mm -hmm. charge people. Another thing is just trying to charge people. Mm -hmm. Forget it. It's like, you know, you, like, I, I take pictures and maybe you have, um, let's say, uh, like our friend Sabrina with Alley Hot Sauce, let's say you have this hot sauce. You enjoy, you enjoy your product and you just want to give it to people so they're happy <laughs> and it's like you feel weird about asking them for money and it's like, ugh. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, I don't know if you ever have. I don't. That I don't know that I've ever had that. Well, <laughs> problems asking for money. I don't understand. Uh, yeah, no. What is this? I think Zach has that problem. I definitely know that you also have the problem. I will Sorry. say, anytime I start a new business, anytime I start selling a new product, I do have that problem. And when we started selling the twenty thousand dollar package, we went from a five thousand dollar package, which I was comfortable with, to a twenty thousand dollar package. It was, you know, it's not necessarily even. Am I giving enough value? It's can they even afford it, mm -hmm. right? It's one of the things that, that comes to me every so often. And I, I think the easiest way as, as business owners to get around that is just know, one, you're selling an amazing product and know that it does have value. So that, that should never be a question. Always give more than you're, you're asking in money. But then, two, it's would you pay for it if you had the money? Like if, and I think back, if somebody came in and said, like, I'll guarantee you 100000 my business personal example, if somebody guaranteed me I'd make $100,000, all I had to do was pay them 20000 and they teach me and give me everything, then I'd make 100000 for the rest of my life, I would have paid that, I would have found a way, I would have like maxed out paid credit cards. Paid 10 times like, over. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I would have paid that 10 times over, and because that's what coaching's done for me. You know, I total in the last five years, I've spent $50,000 in coaching, and this year I've made half a million dollars. So you look at it, it's a 10x return this year, what about next year when I go and make a million dollars? So it, it's mm -hmm. like that money just exponentially. So you've got to know that your product is going to deliver. Mm -hmm. And then you've got to know, or you've got to start talking to people who need your product so much. The money isn't even a thing. It's like, yeah, sure, okay, I'll, I'll give you that money for, for this photo shoot. That's cheap. Mm -hmm. right? You've got to get to the people who need it. Like Chris doesn't even have to look for business. They don't even act, like I'm sure you give them quotes, but they're like, yeah, sure, send it. Like, just go do it. Yeah, because right. you're doing so much value, and it's you're because of that demonstrating value early on. Yes, yeah. well, at least commercial yes. contractors, residential can be kind of tough sometimes. Well, but you were already, like, you were already, you've learned to go to those guys that will pay. Oh yeah, without a doubt. Yeah, without a doubt. you've learned to go to the guys that pay. That's it. You were already a plumber, and you were just stepping away from being a plumber to be another oh, plumber. Yeah, I see what you're saying. But with me, I mean, I guess I was a photographer, but it, it wasn't. I wasn't charging people for it, it was just a hobby. Mm. Um, uh, and making that hobby, uh, you know, profitable. 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 And yeah. That's the key. But um, <clears throat> what's important is um, so you have this idea, you have this hobby, you have this thing that you want to do, and you want to make money from it. What helps is having, having that nice looking website, mm. you know, having an official name for your business. Making it look official convinces other people that it's not just a hobby for you mm -hmm. and it's an actual, right. it's a thing, it's yeah. a thing. And, and they're going to be more likely to give you money because you're an actual thing. You have a professional 
contract, you have a professional waiver, you have that website, yep. you have that yeah, business that name, check, you have that logo. Check, check mark on Facebook. Oh, I forgot to look. The yeah. check mark on yeah. Facebook, social media. All, we'll talk about another all those time, pieces yeah. tie into killing imposter syndrome. Yeah. Right? Like getting yeah. a logo, getting a brand. But some of them, like for a graphic design artist, you can do those things cheaply and you can do that. Yourself. You can do it yourself. If you, yeah, if you're in the creative community, you have a lot of different people that can help you get there. Like we, I know a lot of graphic designers and I, the same one, your same graphic designer did my, mm -hmm. my logo. I did my own website just because, uh, Wix. Andrew Thomas com. Nasser. Andrew Thomas yeah. Nasser. He's, a, Andrew, he's, not there. he's awesome. I want to update my logo. Let's, uh, let's get on that. Let's bro. talk. <laughs> <laughs> let's talk. Um, but yeah, I mean, so, but I mean, I didn't wake up and say I want to take pictures and then make something official. It was a long process. It was a lot of internal fighting for years. Um, and then I, I forgot how I'd gotten this. I think I had the website, but I was still like, mm, you know, iffy about things. I had gotten my first yeah, uh, paid. Yeah, but I had gotten my first paid shoot with someone. And then I was like, oh, <laughs> whoa, okay. And I didn't know her. Yep. So it was that kind of like, oh. Hold on a minute, all right, all right. So I did this and this and this, and that equaled this customer that I didn't know, and advertising is just, you, you just gotta. <laughs> so much to unpack. You, it's just like, I, there was no set, like, do this, do this, do this, do this, and you know, there's a lot of fighting with yourself, but what helps is having the group of people that who are encouraging you, and because there are definitely people in my life who say, oh, you know, just do it. Oh, that's nice that you do that. Um, yeah. Cool. We'll, we'll yeah. To... Oh, that's cute that you're doing that and stuff. But for for me and probably a lot of entrepreneurs, um, finding a mentor or a team of mentors is vital. I know that we're going to go over mentorship mm. later on, but mm -hmm. for me in particular, like I had what I thought were good mentors, but it ended up being people that didn't want my vision to progress past mm -hmm. where it was yeah. and then I you know stumbled into Amp one day to talk about nerd stuff with you and it like <laughs> exploded where it was just like grow like your mentors need to be feeding you growth serum and if they're not feeding you growth serum <laughs> tell them to heck off because yeah. <laughs> you need that yeah because I I mean for a very long time I had it was just my myself and the imposter me and the imposter <laughs> um until I had people in my life tell me, like, no, you, you can do it. And I know other people that um, I'm friends with that they do their thing and they're kind of doing um, their their hobby on the side. Not their hobby, um, making money from their hobby. But until you have that person telling you, you no, know, you can actually be doing more with this and you're struggling and there are things that you can do so you're not struggling and you're still doing what you like and you're not you're not ruining um that um you're not <laughs> i don't know how to say this authenticity uh, no or... you're um when you have something you really like doing but then it becomes too much of a, of a job and then right. you're just like <laughs> yeah. so so one thing i want to talk about there is um i read a book once that uh that really helped me understand this for my writing in particular is because uh, again, I do I do like to write creatively. Um, you know, published author, Amazon. Mm -hmm. Whoa! <laughs> sorry. Oh, sorry. Uh, did that come out? <laughs> humble uh, brag. Josh wears a but, lot of hats. Humble brag. <laughs> uh, so, but on that note, like one of the things that this book said is that uh, if you want other people to take you seriously in your business, then you have to take yourself seriously in your business. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. so where before you were just like oh, I just take pictures as a hobby like if you see it as a hobby then everyone else will see it as a hobby That's yeah true. but if That's at true. the moment you switch that mindset to no this is how I make my money like this is my job this is my profession then everyone yeah. will look at you and be like that is their profession I, how could I possibly expect them to do it for free mm -hmm. correct because you correct. that is that is what you do period mm -hmm. yep. um, and it might not be like a on and off switch it no, might it be like a dim time. light, and yeah. slowly, it's like, <laughs> that'll take time. No, it's super hard because, like, again, owning owning Amp Academy and teaching most of the classes, and like working on getting other instructors, so that way I can I can start to like pull away. Um, but then, like, having to work the front desk and and having to having to 
accept the money from people who are more than willing to pay because they know the value mm -hmm. that Amp Academy mm -hmm. offers to their kids or themselves. Uh, so they they have no problem giving me the money. Mm -hmm. um, I have a problem taking it. Mm -hmm. uh, and it's it's just because like I would love to do everything I do for free. Um, I just can't. Like there are bills to pay. There are like at this point now I have I have employees that I have to pay, and they're relying on me for their livelihood. And so, the side of it too is so you have to take care of yourself, and you have to take care of the business, and you have to be okay accepting what you're worth. And you want to open more gyms. If mm -hmm. if the gym is not profitable, if your academy, academy, yeah, if your academies are not profitable, how can you open more of them? So, like you, you just have to get comfortable with with creating a ton of value, which you're very good at, mm -hmm. then you have to get very comfortable with accepting <coughs> money for the value you're giving. Yeah. And then attracting people who have money to accept your value. Does that mean that just because they don't have money doesn't mean they can't get it? Well, maybe not at this time, but once the company gets so big, then yeah, you can do pro bono things where it's like, yeah, you know what, on this day I bring in all the kids of the entire city come in for free. Mm -hmm. Like you can do those things, but you have to survive the beginning, and in the beginning you have to make money. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You have to get paid for what you're doing, and that means you just have to give so much value, and you have to be humbled and say, yeah, I'll, I'll accept money for this. Mm -hmm. yeah. I was just going to say, but don't sell yourself short. Mm -hmm. so, right, and that's a hard thing. Because, yeah. I, I mean, just like when you're not, um, when you're not, Oh no, um, when you're not asking for money um, and you're just giving things away for free, the the quality, not the quality of your work, but the way people see your work, it's just like, oh, you know. Absolutely. Um, uh -huh. But even if it's just like, say, it's you, you're just spending, um, you're just um, asking for $50 for an hour photography session yep. but then someone else is charging two hundred dollars for the the same amount of time mm -hmm. yeah. people are going to go to that person mm -hmm. because they, they perceive yeah they perceive yeah. that yeah they see the two hundred dollars oh that that person you must, must be, be including this including this including this including this not mm -hmm. even that it's right. just it, it it must be a better product because yeah. it's it um it's more money just like if you go to the dollar store and you see something Right. Rather than you going to the Apple store and getting, you know, the same kind of, it's the, a phone charger that does the same thing, you know that the Apple right. store is going to... And, and that's actually a really good point, and that's something that, um, that I struggled with, uh, with Amp Academy again, because, like, I have the Ninja Warrior membership for Ninja Warrior classes at $50 a month for, uh, for five classes, and then the Unlimited Ninja Warrior and Unlimited Open Gym is $100 a month. Um, but then there are other Ninja Warrior gyms that charge fifty dollars a month for unlimited everything. But, but what do you the get? reality is exactly. the the reality is that the instructors there might not be providing you the service that you deserve. So you're right. you're getting what you pay for. Yeah, that's a less expensive location to go. Um, the other thing is that the the those other Ninja Warrior places are gyms and. Amp Academy is not a gym. It is a place where you get fit, yes, but it is an academy. Ultimately, you're learning things about about yourself, about how your body moves, about how physics works, especially when we're working with kids. Like We go into all that detail and stuff, but that's something that people won't get elsewhere. So, so being okay with pricing yourself higher because you have that added value, like with Mayfire Photography, she poked you with that pen really hard. Uh, it's just sticking in there. Um, but with Mayfire Photography, it like how many people can guarantee that they're going to get quality photos back in a week's time? Dude, after, I got mine in 24 hours. After, yeah. So no, she's, that's what I'm saying. She's fire with So like, that's why time. I'm like, it was great. So There's, Can I just say this? that I There are other photographers that... Um, that I, I, I see the work they do and they charge it so much. But the quality of their, I don't want to say I mean, the quality of the work. It's okay to isn't. charge a lot if you it, provide a good quality product. Yeah. But right. I'm right. just saying that you will see other people and other businesses um, that have a lower quality of mm -hmm. products, but who are getting maybe yeah. um, more money and more business. It's just because. It's because they're willing to ask for it. Yes. Right. And that's, that's the other side, of, that's the whole other side of the spectrum, right? 
So you guys are doers and, and makers. On the other side, there's people who are willing to just ask for money and not yeah. provide the service. Right, yeah. So mm -hmm. it's about getting that balance of, like, if you want a long-time sustainable business. Because obviously these people that we're talking about who overcharge and under-deliver, they're not going to last forever. It's about over-delivering and overcharging. Mm -hmm. Well, not overcharge, but charge what you're worth. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then over-deliver on reward that they want to work yeah. with you. Absolutely. The other, the, other reason, the other reason you have to charge is it makes people show up, mm -hmm. right? That's true, too. <laughs> yeah. That's I, true. I charge coaching now because they don't show up if I don't. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> like I would love to coach for free, but they don't show up. It's like uh, when, you when you bill them, they're like, oh, yeah, I got to go to this one. I paid or, for it. Yeah, <laughs> it's true. Um, just the, the opportunity for someone to uh, book your time and uh, in and of itself is important. So, like, uh, like India, for example, she for a while she wasn't making – people put down deposits and a lot of times she oh, do terrible. all this work draw yeah. these mm -hmm. awesome freaking masterpieces and people just don't show up and once she put in place that she's like taking taking money down deposits even if the person doesn't show up they're out 20 bucks or 30 bucks or whatever so right. her time's not wasted mm -hmm. right. and that's something that I I had to justify too is like you know in, if I'm charging you this amount of money for four hours I feel bad if it seems like a big price tag, but there's a lot more work that the client's not seeing get put in, and right. the overhead that mm -hmm. they're not they're not taking into account and stuff. Um, and to be fair, your clients they don't even need to know all the stuff that's being put in. They can't get what you sell anywhere else. Mm -hmm. There's literally it's no. It's yeah. your business is so unique they cannot get it anywhere else. Mm -hmm. so you, you're you no matter what you're charging, you're undercharging because it's so unique, mm -hmm. right? And like that's that's one of the conversations we've had before. It's just that you're still working on those boundaries of yeah. what to charge, but like you provide so much, you literally create an entire universe for them, and it's not just four hours. You're running weekend events. Mm -hmm. You're running well, whole one days. Of, one of the one of the services we offer is the LARP after dark. That's only oh, the LARP after dark is phenomenal. Though. But you know, it's that's also another thing is I I want I created that product for not only for me to you know have blessing take place more than just. Mm -hmm. uh, more, more, six more. times a year um, so people can hop in exist in that world and have fun in it but I want to, to make the opportunity for other people that are trying to get their ideas off the ground like to get their LARPs going because there's a lot of costs that go in and mm -hmm. it's, a, it's a big hurdle to take on well I'm giving you the opportunity yeah it has a price tag but what is this price tag if you're actually seeing your idea develop and seeing right. people exist in your world and stuff yeah. um, so like I I'm like next year my rates are going up for for LARP after dark, mm -hmm. and it was yeah, it was sure. hard for me to kind of to kind of like justify that, mm -hmm. but they're going up because I want to do better, bigger things. I want the product mm -hmm. to deliver better, and I want it to be more enjoyable and the experience be more worthwhile. It was hard for you to justify it to yourself, not to yeah. justify it in general, because the reality is you provide something that other people wouldn't get on oh, their yeah. own, mm -hmm. and and again, quality of it, I like. I only I only surround myself with the best because yeah. that's how I grow, right? So yeah. making sure that I know the best person who is managing LARPs is how I can make sure that uh, that anyone I refer to is is getting that. But that said, like that is your value, so it's not justifying. It's not so much justifying the cost of the event itself. It's more justifying yeah. it to yourself because of that whole imposter. We're syndrome always thing we're always going to be our own always hits us. worst critic. Yeah. For the creative people, and then this to end is, right after this, right, we so are this like is the, eight right. minutes past. This is the best <laughs> advice for the creative people: is charge for a product that you don't really enjoy. Like as as you get creative and you're like, oh man, I'm kind of done with this one, but I've marketed it a little bit and people still want it. Charge more for it. Mm -hmm. Just like get to the point where people start saying, oh yeah, you know what, that is too much. Okay, like you're cool with quitting that anyway. Once you get to the point where you're finally done with it charge more for it and then hire somebody else to do it for you hmm. right this way hmm. you can eliminate yourself out of something you don't enjoy and you can put somebody else into that and you're charging enough to justify paying that person and you're still making your profit so like That's I cool guarantee idea. you guys are not charging enough for what you do anyway hmm. but then when you get tired of it or like LARP after dark or you know certain sessions they start getting annoying to you pay somebody to do those for you charge a little bit more because you're probably undercharging anyway because you guys are too nice, <laughs> which is a good quality, and then replace it. Just make that a part of your business that runs itself, and you're giving somebody a job, and you're always giving that service away. Mm. You never want to kill a source of income. You just want to supplement them with other ones. Mm. So. 
Awesome. Well, like uh, on that note, we kind of went off on a bunch of different uh, trains there, but that was starting your business. <laughs> um, <laughs> it's true. Theoretically. The problem is that, uh, not the problem, the, the thing with starting your own business is there's so much involved in it that that narrowing it all down can take just literally days of talking. Um, so you'll hear you'll hear this topic come up um, a lot in future episodes, also uh, in different uh, different ways, different angles, and things like that. Um, but thank you for enjoying episode five. I'm glad you guys finally got to meet uh, Kalen and Mayfire Photography. <laughs> it only took forever. Um, so thank you guys for enjoying episode five. Uh, get out there and start your business. Defeat your imposter. You are the best. Shut it down. Yeah. <laughs>